to an informational meeting will point for phase three. Tom Ward has been asked by Legacy Development to act on vested rights. Uh, this project on March 20th, 1986, Western Town Board passed resolution number 108, which granted final approval of the planned unit development plan, as well as rezoning of the Willow Point development site from RB multiple family resident district zoning to R. PRB, Multiple Family Residential District Zoning. The Town Board's resol resolution granted approval for World Point Development Corporation to construct a multi-phase project that would consist of 98 townhouses and a seven-story mid-rise building that would consist of 158 apartments. The project was approved by the Town of Western Planning Board and final plans for the entire development were signed by the Planning Board Chairman on April 30th, 1986. The project would be developed in three phases. Phase one would consist of 34, 35 condos. Construction commenced on the uh, approved project, but the owners were not able to complete the project due to financial trouble. On September 30th, 1970, the property was purchased by legacy by bankruptcy trustees D. In reliance on the town board's resolution number 108 and the planning board approvals, the project had received legacy retained password associates to provide engineering of the project. The, the utilities, road network, and other infrastructure that were installed by legacy in 2002 are adequate to support the additional 98 resident, residential apartment units. Passero has completed an engineer's report and traffic impact study showing that the existing utilities, road work, and other infrastructure would adequately provide for the water, sanitary, sewer, roads, and stormwater management needs of the new construction. As I read there before, this was done in 1986, and none of, these, none of the town board members were on the town board back in 1986. None of us approved this project. I've never spoken out about this project. But it's come before me now because uh, Legacy Development has asked the town of Webster whether or not they have vested rights in this project. What are vested rights? A developer can acquire common law vested rights to develop property in accordance with prior zoning regulations when in reliance on legally issued permit, the, de the, the developer effect, effects substantial changes and incurs substantial expenses to further the development, and the developer's actions in reliance on the permit are so substantial that municipal action results in serious loss, rendering the improvements valueless. A vested right in development can be acquired when pursuant to a valid issued subdivision approval, the developer demonstrated a commitment to the purpose for which the approval was granted by effecting substantial changes and incurring substantial expenses to further the development. So what we're here for tonight and what the town board wanted, what the town board wanted to hear from the residents of Roll Point Park. We put out a notice over two weeks ago that we're going to have this meeting to hear what you have to say about this approved project from 1986 since we weren't on the board and we did not approve the project. We want to hear from the residents and before we make a decision on their vested rights. I and Tom Ward have consulted with the town attorney. He has given us that, his opinion. Now we want to hear from the residents of Old Point on what their concerns are. I'm going to let the uh, attorney for Legacy Develop give us a short uh, overview of what they're doing because I think there's been some changes from a seven-story mid-rise and some other things there that were in the original proposal. And I would like you to lay them out now so we're all on the same page. Thank you very much, Mr. Supervisor. My name is Chris Nadler. Uh, General Counsel.
counsel for Mark Ford, the parent company of Legacy Development. I have uh, with us here tonight is also Don Riley, our vice president, and Brian Powers, our uh, senior project manager. Both uh, both of these gentlemen have been involved with this project since uh, since we brought it back before the town board, and I'm sure they're familiar to you. Uh, what Legacy is proposing to do is based on our vested rights acquired in 1986 and, and uh, Vested when Legacy uh, expended substantial amounts of money to further the project based on that 1986 approval, um, is, is booked to build a uh, four story mid rise apartment building which will have 98 units, uh, substantially decreased from the originally approved seven story 158 um, uh, unit uh, apartment building. Uh, there will be an on-site swimming pool, uh, other amenities, access to the lake. Um, as you know, down um, uh, the, at the end of Willow Point Way, there's a trail going down to the, uh, uh, the bay, excuse me, the bay. And um, we're going to build out our 47 uh, dock slips there. The issue is, is our vested rights, and those were acquired in 2002 with Legacy spent substantial amounts of money and engaged in significant construction in furtherance of the overall project. Uh, as the supervisor mentioned, uh, the, the improvements made in 2002 were sized and intended to benefit the whole project, not just phase two, but also <coughs> phase three, the mid-rise apartment building. The Mark IV has submitted uh, affidavits from Brian Powers uh, John Caruso, two engineers each with over 30 years of civil engineering ex uh, experience, as well as an affidavit from Anthony DiMarzo, a real estate developer with over 50 years real estate development experience, showing exactly how much money and how much construction uh, was related to uh, and uh, installed for the benefit of Phase 3, uh, the Mid-Rise Apartment Building. Those affidavits were submitted about a year ago, um, and I believe you have them along with the exhibits showing exactly how much money was spent. John Caruso, uh, president of Passero Associates Engineering, was also uh, the engineer in charge on the project in 2002. Um, so he's intimately familiar not only with uh, construction expenses in general, but the construction expenses for infrastructure on this particular project. As you can see from those affidavits, Legacy spent uh, $161,412 on drainage and stormwater management facilities that benefit both phase two and phase three of the project. $74,564 on sanitary sewer improvements that benefit both phase two and phase three of the project. $71,136 on road installation that benefits phase three, the, where uh, Willow Point Way curves around, that was an extra added uh, set of pavement. The gutters that were installed as part of the road installation uh, were sized to benefit the drainage for the whole project. Uh, water service to phase three was installed when they, they built phase two at the cost of $68,195. And soil erosion control landscaping expenses were $109,850. Total expense in 2002 directly related to phase three, the mid-rise apartment building, was approximately $485,157. And that's backed up, as you can see, with affidavits and engineering estimates from the actual project in 2002. Um, beyond what the supervisor uh, stated at the uh, outset of this, I don't have much more, but I'm prepared to answer any questions the board uh, might have. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to open up for comments, and I, I just want to tell you that our only function, the town board's only function, is to deem whether the developer has vested rights. Okay. Then, if that, if the town board does deem that. You go to, we refer to the planning. The planning board in the town of Webster does all of Webster planning. The town board doesn't do planning. Okay? So, if this
this passes here, and goes to the planning board, your next step is to get the best project you can from the planning board. And they will have all kinds of meetings and everything. I don't know what's going there, I don't know. But I know my function tonight is only, only, to figure out whether or not the developers had vested rights since they took over the, the uh, uh, property uh, back in, what did I get? 1997. 1997, September 30th, 1997. That's what's in front of us. Usually we would not see this project at all. We've never seen this project ourselves before this because we were never on the boards. Okay? So I've done a lot of research on it. I know the board's done a lot of research. We've talked to the town attorney. Um, we have never been in this situation before. Usually a project comes in, if it's open, we refer to the planning board and report that the planning board does what they do best, the planning, and the project goes off. Uh, that's, we're only here tonight to do the best of rights. We do not do the planning. We're not going to talk about if, it, if it's four stories, five stories. We're not going to talk about boat ramps. We're not going to talk about trails or anything else there tonight. That's not our function. Our function is, do they have vested rights from September 30th, 1997? That's the bottom line. That's the only thing that's in front of this board tonight. I couldn't tell you about seven stories. I couldn't tell you about parking. I couldn't tell you about transportation in or out. That is all a planning board function. Okay? So, it's open. Uh, the podium's open for anybody that wants to speak, uh, for as long as you want to speak. And we will listen, and then we will talk amongst ourselves and find out if we can also address the right. Okay? Just give us your name and address so we've got the record, please. Good evening. Cheryl Savari, 14 Mount Ash Trail, Webster, New York. Thank you for acknowledging the fact that uh, the vested rights uh, that are being here, here tonight is, it commenced in September 30th, 1997. That acknowledges the fact that you've read a few of my letters. Um, what was it said here tonight was the uh, Supreme Court decision that was made on March 13th, 2019, where the applicant uh, made uh, some contentions regarding Willow Point Way, which was part of the 1986 plan that you referenced here tonight. Um, vested rights don't last forever. In fact, based on the Supreme Court ruling, they never started. Legacy contends um, in a proposal from July that was given to the Town Planning Board in a July 27th letter to the Town Board. Page 5, we made a response to the draft proposal that Legacy had given to the town. And this proposal was insufficient. Um, they said it was reasonable. We respectfully disagree with that. The proposal benefited only the applicant. It was unreasonable uh, to also believe that a person or persons, such as our association, would negotiate terms post-execution of the instrument and suggested, as suggested in the proposal. Also, the proposal lacks specification of remedy in the event of any disagreement. Four, the proposal in item number four said Waterville, Waterview will not contribute to any use of private property. The applicant has shown previously in public, to the public that they are unable to predict the future or the degree of said conflicts. Proposals, agreements, lawsuits, and documents have been used as a device to further engage in deceptive acts against the homeowners of Little Point and our community. Threats of legal action have been made against homeowners in public forums, and the Supreme Court decision reflects an easement to Little Point Way will not be afforded to the applicant. There are no more doors open for this entity in fact, the Supreme Court decision reflects that in the past contracts for legacy, they can be reviewed for further separation from legacy in Mark IV. This is the certified letter, page 5, that the town received. Mark IV also contends 
or legacy. Yet each member of the HOA took title and was fully aware of this claim. This is contractually inaccurate based on the Supreme Court ruling and the decision as legacy transferred extinguished documents relative to our property. The implication of the court's findings is significant because it not only stands for the proposition that the extinguished declarations can be validly requisitioned as a title of matter, they are not merely clouds on title or minor defects that go to the root of our title, the title of 30 homeowners. This is the offering plan that was given to us when we closed on our property. Based on the Supreme Court ruling, these pages might as well have been blank. Mark, off, Mark IV also contends, or legacy, that Willow Point Way is structurally sufficient. However, legacy, as you mentioned this evening, provided no construction or infrastructure to Willow Point Way in 1986 or any time in between. County records reflect and subdivision roads named in Waterview and plat maps in county records show these maps as this road is now named Willow Point Trail. Mark IV and Legacy also contend that the town did not use permit agreements, per, per, uh, the term easement agreement in, with the HOA rather calling it permanent document access. This is false. In a town PCR meeting, March 21st, 2017, the town stated, page two, section two, that the town would need to see a permanent legal written document, an agreement for private road. In 23 years, there's nothing that's been permanent relative to the applicant, rather than proof of bad history, no cooperation, or accommodation. Every contract from 1997, from legacy to Mark IV, has been an act to deceive the homeowners of Willow Point. In 23 years, the only resolution is a permanent partition from this entity in every form. Town records will reflect in July of 2017, 20 homeowners wrote to the town of Webster, 20 homeowners objecting to every agreement and any easement for legacy, Mark IV, and all entities related to the applicant. It first needs to be established that this community has governing documents. The Supreme Court ruling states the declarations are extinguished. We, not, we will not be held hostage by this town's governing body until we have established one of our own. Whether it's the fire marshal, zoning, or planning, many, many issues need to be resolved in this community before we have discussions with any outside third parties. It should also be established this evening, and as is noticed to the other 29 other homeowners at Willow Point, selling any Willow Point home could be problematic going forward. The Supreme Court decision has been recorded alerting the public that the HOA legal documents are extinguished. They can no longer be passed on to other unsuspecting home buyers without perpetuating what is known what is now known as a two-decade-old fraud. Passing on this to representatives or lenders or in a real estate transaction would now be known as fraud based on public records and the Supreme Court decision. All outside third parties are why this HOA and this town has crumbled. There will be no more drafts, easements, agreements, discussions, contracts, negotiations, call it what you will, until this broken, what's broken in Willow Point is fixed, that's up to 30 homeowners in Little Point that we have an investment and we own it. No one else can be involved in that. Thank you.
Good evening. I'm Nikki Mori, and I'm the acting president of the Willow Point Homeowners Association. I live in a home that you built, and I love it, but I don't like the way you do business. The rift between legacy and the HOA began in 2015 when the portion of Willow Point Way, owned by the Homeowner Association, was in poor condition and need of resurfacing. You and the Waterview renters had been using our portion of Willow Point Way for years without ever providing a dime towards the upkeep. When we asked you to contribute towards the paving cost, you showed no appreciation and instead you refused. It was only after we hired an attorney and filed a summary judgment against you did you finally offer $12,000, netting $7,000, after we had paid our attorney fees towards a $22,000 paving expense. Fast forward to the summer of 2017, you came to the planning board with your proposal to build a high rise on the remaining patch of ground in Willow Point on the Bay. One condition of the planning board was for you to come to terms with the HOA regarding an easement to use our portion of Willow Point Way before the planning board would consider going forth in the approval process for your development. A lawsuit ensued, depositions were taken, and the HOA board worked together with our attorney on a reasonable list of requests in exchange for the easement. The Honorable Judge Frazee offered to facilitate at no cost the discussion between <coughs> Legacy and the HOA. These negotiations went on for months with few counteroffers or concessions from Legacy. Finally, Judge Frazee felt the parties were at an impasse and it was decided that she would make the final decision regarding the easement. In March, she ruled that Legacy was denied an easement for the use of the HOA's portion of Willow Point Way, meaning that current renters and residents, if their vision to build a high-rise is approved, must use McEwen Road or another means of ingress and egress. So what is the meaning behind this narrative? It illustrates that legacy will never be a good neighbor. One of those two recent occasions when they could have chosen to do the right thing, they forced 30 members of the Willow Point Homeowner Association to hire an attorney and fork over almost $2,000 from each homeowner for those two legal battles. If we had not had you as a neighbor, we could have afforded to put a new roof on one of our 30-year-old buildings this summer. The Willow Point Homeowner Association vigorously opposes the legacy high-rise development because you have shown that you can never be a good neighbor. Chance for anyone? Or close that? Pardon me. Okay. 
Both portions closed. Bring it back to the town board. A couple points. As I stated before I opened the forum, our only two, our only thing here tonight is vested rights. I heard about a road. Uh, not a party to the road. The town board has not been a party to the road discussion. We were not uh, involved in any legal action. So we're not a party to the road. That's, that's separate from the town board. Uh, 2015 rift between Legacy and an HOA. We're not party to that either. That's a separate action between the developer and the HOA. In terms of the planning board, that's an issue with the planning board if the project gets it. If there was something said at the planning board that needs to be addressed that the planning board brought forth in 2017, then they're going to have to address it if it goes to the planning board. It's not what we're here tonight for. Okay? And not a good neighbor? Well, I think a lot of people in town might say that about their neighbors. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not in my decision tonight, okay? I, I am not living where you are. I don't know what happens on a daily basis. I really can't say to you what that is. My decision tonight and what the town board has been discussing is whether or not they have made an investment over a period of time. Uh, and that investment leads to vested rights in continuing on with this project. And like I said, if the project continues on, it will be up to the planning board to decide how that plant, that project comes out. It's not gonna be the town board, okay? Our function here is a legal function, not a planning function. So I'm gonna be quiet for just a second. And then four other great colleagues here that have opinions, and I'll let them go. Could I ask that you were know, our attorney reads the definition of best rights and conclusions? Well, let's say position of best rights. The developer can acquire common law vested rights to develop property in accordance with prior zoning regulations, which in this case would be the 1986 regulations, with reliance on the legally issued permit. Developer affects substantial changes and incurs substantial expenses to further the development. And the developer's actions and reliance on the permit are so substantial that municipal action results in serious loss from the improvements essentially in Thank you. Did the Supreme Court <coughs> did the Supreme Court decision have any impact on vested rights? Supreme Court decision, you mean you're talking about the most recent action? Yes. I don't know. I was not part of that. The town was not a party to the proceeding. Well, that's uh, asking the question. I'm an attorney licensed by the New York State Bar. Um, I was a counsel of record on that case, I believe, the one she's referring to. Um, and I, can, I, I certify that it had nothing to do with vested rights, it had to do with uh, an easement by implication. And, and no issues of vested rights were uh, pertained to that uh, lawsuit. So the vested right issue did not come up in that lawsuit? That is correct. So what the lawsuit was about was about a section of a road. Am I correct? That's correct. It was about an implied easement uh, from Bay Road through Phase One, that's owned by the Homeowners Association, on Willow Point Way to the remainder of Willow Point Way, which is owned by Legacy Development. I'd like Charlie to review that and let us know what that says because. It's obviously the two main group of developer and the individual are not agreeing on what the Supreme Court ruling was. If, if I may, I sent that uh, to your town attorney. 
attorney shortly after the decision was rendered uh, did not impact the professor's rights. From what I read, it wasn't even mentioned, if I recall. I think they're two separate things. I agree. Vested rights is one thing. The Supreme Court ruling is another thing. Yes. I'm only here tonight. Mr. We are only here tonight. Mr. Rubez, if I can say one thing. Not, I read it. I read no, the no, that, no, no, not about that. When okay. I called your offices on Monday, two weeks ago, I asked the secretary what the meeting was, in pertain, for, was pertaining to. Yeah. All I was told by the secretary was, you'll have to come to the meeting to find out. Okay. Nobody had the opportunity to prepare, but yet here tonight, you're saying this is about vested rights. Why is it two weeks ago on Monday, the 21st, of you cannot say, oh, the meeting's about vested rights, and nobody had the opportunity to prepare? I could have said it if you don't. But my secretary might not have known. I okay. specifically asked that <laughs> question: What is the meeting, the meeting pertaining to, and what it is? What is it referencing? Two weeks ago. And yes, Monday, two weeks ago, time. when she, it when it hit your Facebook page, uh, I asked, and she put me on hold, and I was told point blank, just come to the meeting, and you'll find out. I don't believe after person. coming here tonight that that was the appropriate response. Okay. I just want to see. All right, no problem. I just will, for the record, tell you that I was not in town two weeks ago, and my secretary probably did not know what the agenda was or she would answer to everything. It was also stated on the agenda, though, the purpose. Right. We'll go there. I was on vacation two weeks ago. Val, do you, do you have a comment? I can't see you there. But I, do you have a comment on the uh, best of brands? I have no, all my documentation is at home. If I had known to bring this much information, I would have. But no, I, I'd love to have another opportunity, but it sounds like you didn't make a decision otherwise. It's okay? Yes, uh, but, yes. Uh, did, did you walk to the... Sure, I, there's just a question. Yes, uh, the mic doesn't pick Okay. Up. So I'm a little confused. I'm Frank Vito, um, 22 Magnolia Lane. We're very new to the area, so all this is um, kind of uh, confusing, but we're kind of sorting it out. My point is, though, you want, wanted to hear from the residents. But you are uh, only here to make a judgment on vested rights. So what is our point of being here? Thank you. You can both you can give me your opinion. I, yeah, our opinion. I, I mean, it's out there. We're talking about it. But you're talking, you're saying that you're, you're making it very clear that you don't want to, you know, you're going to make this decision and you don't want to be responsible for anything else. So. Our opinions are important. I understand it. Yes, they are. But it has nothing to do with your decision. Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> yes, they do. I hope it does. But I just, I just try to say to you, we're not in the planning. We're not, we're not, we're not going to build a building. We're, we're not in the planning of it. We're not in the traffic study. Right. That's all for somebody else. We're not environmental. Right. Okay. We are. They have made an application to us. Right. Based on best of rights. Or I wouldn't even hear this. Okay? It would go to the planning board. It would have nothing to do with this. Okay, so after all that, our opinions do matter. Yes. And you will take our opinions into account yes. in your decision. Yes. Not just by a legal vested rights issue. I'm gonna we're listening to Adam. Yes. <laughs> That's why I asked the Okay, I, the I asked the question. Yes. You said you're listening, but is it correct that you're gonna listen to us? not just use a legal term to uh, decide. 
I'm not going to listen to about a road because that's not what we're here for. Okay? I'm not going to listen to a squabble, an important squabble, between the HOA and Mark Corp. Okay? That's not, you have to understand, that's not my purpose here tonight. I understand. Okay? So that has no bearing on my decision. Okay. But I just want to make sure that you understand that, you know, we feel like we got uh, backhanded here. Because we were, come, we were coming here to express our opinions, and they have been expressed very clearly. But you prefaced everything by saying it's a legal matter on vested rights. So our our point is, so what are we doing here? So I hopefully you'll take this into consideration and understand some of the issues that we have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. To answer your question, I found out the name for sure. Thank you. I close the meeting now. Um, at this point. This is the only time I closed it. Hang on. Question. If vested rights are granted, what is the next step? Well, you're not exactly granting vested rights. What you're doing, the, the, the issue is, that, and this has been going on, and I'll say, Mr. Manuel and I have been in discussions probably not just with me, but with members of the planning board, with my deputy, who is the attorney for the planning board, with Jeff Benway, who's the commissioner of public works, and we've had numerous meetings, and Mr. Adam and I have had probably a dozen discussions. Can you discussions move your mic up so I can hear you? Charlie, you can't hear you. Okay. No, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. sorry. Uh, in any event, we've been, we've been discussing this particular issue uh, since uh, July of 2017 question of uh, whether or not the developer could move forward to the planning board with this. And the issue was whether or not those permits were still in effect. That's really the issue. Uh, I had to be convinced, as did uh, my deputy and as did other members of the town, uh, that that was in fact the case. And it's been going on for some time. And uh, basically, I'm giving the board my position and opinion on this, and what the board is doing is saying uh, yes or no, there are vested rights, and if the vested rights exist, then they can move on to the next step, which would be to go to the board. But you're not grant, exactly granting vested rights. The vested rights that exist to the exist. Okay. So essentially we're acknowledging them on yes. that. Yes.
thing and being grandfather? Could you say your name and address, please? Deborah Coase, McKeown Drive. I've been to several of these meetings before the planning board, before the zoning board, the House Authority tonight, all the variances. I mean, I've been to several meetings. And I guess tonight I wasn't expecting this to be about vested rights. I thought it was more information than that. And the word that came up several times with many people I've spoken to on all the boards, everyone in the town, uh, was the word grandfather, not vested rights. Is there a difference? And if there I, I, I don't know. Grandfather is a, sort of a vernacular term that's used a lot. It well, it's the word used, used, used with yeah. me. Yeah, I, vested rights. Similar. What vested rights means is that the rights that were granted a long time ago are still in effect. Okay. But it doesn't indicate any financial expense. Grandfather. No, I, 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 I don't like the term grandfather when you say it's a grandfather. Yeah, because at really, some point. The term vested rights is a legal term. At some point, we were told that it was not grandfather. I don't know. So I, that's, that's why I'm asking. I'm really confused here tonight. Oh, okay. I guess you did and you didn't answer my question, but then, thank you. Uh, in the back, I can't see her. She wanted to re-speak. Uh, this is uh, Cheryl. 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 Back. Who's lying to the I don't know. The Supreme Court ruling that you received does go back to vested rights. The offering plan that was submitted to the state in 1997 was extinguished. None of these plans that are here since 1988, based on the Supreme Court ruling, makes these plans not vested. In 1986, the permits were handed out to somebody else. The permits were not obtained in 1997 by legacy. Those are not vested rights. Your, your rights do not vest until you have money in the game. Money in the game started September 30th of 1997. Those permits were not valid through an extinguished offering plan through that Supreme Court ruling. The, there is no investment until 1997. The permits happened before 1997. Those investments were made then. In 2005, those investments were made for Waterview. And all the planning and everything that happened in between, all of those things were made to the LWRP. The LWRP, everything built from 2005 on, were low density. What you have there is a plan that's medium to high density. Those are vested rights. The money in the game was in 1997, September 30th. The LWRP started September 4th. There was a lot of planning with the state long before that. I'm sure the Secretary of State will acknowledge the fact that all of that work went in prior to the vested rights. So low density is what everybody proposed from that date on. And in 2005, you built low density. If you look at the density calculations from Waterview at Willow Point, that's 4.8 units for the 13.68 for the 13 acres. This plan is not low density. You don't have vested rights. Vested rights don't last forever from 1986 to 1997. They just don't. It's already a case study. If I had the opportunity to bring that with me tonight, I would have. You do not have vested rights. I think the town board should give the town and the people of the town another opportunity to come back and prepare for vested rights. Thank you. I'm uh, John Q, Chair. I live on the uh, West High Vista Trail, very, very close to the proposed development. Question I have is for Mr. Genesi. Yes. Regarding the negotiations you and Mr. Nadler had, and just concerning the term substantial, and what you, how you view that term with respect to this 
uh, with respect to these vested rights, whether you determine or whether the board determined that there was, in fact, substantial money invested. And I would ask, is that substantial in compared to the cost of the entire development? All I, the only question I, I have, and, and, it's, and it's, 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 I'm not being argumentative, I'm, I'm just, you know, looking at it from, ter from the standpoint of, you know, information. Well, I don't, I don't know if we had negotiations per se, I think we had a lot of uh, legal and factual going back and forth, I wouldn't say it was a negotiation, because basically, um, I was, uh, as he'll tell you, as I was going to tell you, I was in opposition because as Mrs. Capaldi said, said uh, I also thought to myself, this is 30 plus years old, and how could the permit still be in effect? So I had to be convinced. And we went back and forth, and I, I did research, he did research. Um, I looked at the law, and I equally as important, I looked at the facts that were presented, and, and I was given a lot of factual information and affidavits. So yes, I, I believe that, I want to get into details about the substantial, but yes, I believe that there's, there is substantial investment here that, um, that would support investing in this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I've got to close the meeting again. Okay, hopefully. And uh, the informational part of the meeting is over. Now, when we get to regular town business, there's a resolution part on this, so we're going to have to wait until we get there. Council Okay, moving on now, we're going to discuss resolution confirm the Webster Town Board Resolution Number 108 of the 1986 regarding legacy site plan or low point phase three and referral to the planning board for further action. We have heard the neighbors tonight. We have talked and talked with the town attorney over whether or not uh, substantial monies have been made to keep the vested rights in, in fact in place. And uh, we're going to open up the town board for discussion. I'd like, I'd like some clarification before I were to uh, vote on this. I did. Um, we have two opinions. One. From, from Charlie and from uh, Legacy that the vested rights are vested rights and they're in place and one from the homeowners association saying that the Supreme, Supreme Court decision throughout the plan, throughout all the paperwork. I, 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 the first time I've seen the decision just now, I didn't see anything in there regarding vested rights. Okay. I, mean, I just took a quick look at it in five minutes. So. But their point was that they had this talking about the plans and all that, were prior to this that that was... Extinguished, was the word was used? Extinguished. What does that mean? I don't know. Would you like an explanation? Welcome. Uh, as I said, I was counsel of record on that case. Um, the legacy filed a lawsuit against the Homeowners Association seeking a declaration. The only thing we were seeking was a declaration that there existed an easement by implication over Willow Point Way. We lost. Judge Crazy, after almost a year of negotiation, issued a decision saying, nope, there is not an easement by implication. One of the pieces of evidence that, that I submitted was the Homeowners Association Declaration of Covenants, Deeds, and Restrictions, showing that uh, the only reason I submitted it was to show that it was something that people were aware of, because it contains specific language that the owner of phase, phase two, who was at the time the sponsor of the homeowners association, the original developer, that that owner had an easement over Willow Point Way. Um, that owner became, was foreclosed upon and declared in bankruptcy. That extinguishes his rights over Willow Point Way. I wasn't contending that Legacy had those rights. I used it as, a, as an example. The judge wrote in her decision that that declaration does not grant the owner of phase two an easement, a written easement, 
over below point blank. This case went on for over a year. There was never any mention of vested rights. It had zero to do with, zero, with vested rights. I was, a, I was attorney of record for legacy development in that lawsuit. I was the only attorney for legacy development in that lawsuit. Brian Capitamino of Woods Oviatt was the homeowners association's attorney. There were no vested rights issues involved in that in that matter. It's as simple as that.
uh, the town board an application to look at. They wanted us to look at one thing and one thing only. That was vested rights, not the road, not anything else. Um, that, that goes with planning. Um, so unless anybody has got anything else to say. Uh, okay. It's been so long that this project's been going. That would never happen today in this town at all. When I was on the planning board, if it had come to us then, it wouldn't have, it would have died there at the planning board. Wouldn't have happened. I'm now on the town board and you're coming to me to ask if you've got substantial investment in the property. Based on all the literature I've received, you do have substantial investment. $485,000 worth of investment. I know the residents might not like it, but that is a substantial amount of money. Whether you like it or not, they've invested that money in that project. Because it's three phases, that's how some projects are built. Phase one goes, phase two goes, then phase three goes. Well, phase three didn't go for 15, 20 years. You're right, it shouldn't happen. It did, we're stuck with making a decision. I don't like it any more than the resident. But based on all the legal information I've seen, and what my attorney has told me, they have a right to continue with this project. Now, when it go, if it goes forward and it goes to the planning board, you have every right to go in there and demand things from the planning board to get what you want. Whether that happens or not, that's up to the planning board. There's seven people that sit on that board that will be making decisions. It takes it out of my hands at that point. We don't confer with the planning board. We don't tell them what to do. They're a separate entity. And that's the way it's always been. And it's the way it will continue. I believe that what we're acting on is correct. And I'm not trying to kick the can down the road. It's the last thing I'm trying to do here. But what I've heard tonight is legal stuff about a road and a conflict or a rift between the HOA. I've heard nothing about whether it's going to be a good project. I've heard nothing whether it's going to enhance the neighborhood. I've heard nothing of that. You're trying to stop it because you got a riff, but I haven't heard whether they're proposing a good project or whether they cut the size of the project already to make it better for everybody. I haven't heard any of that, okay? But I'm not trying to kick the can. My only thing here tonight is do they have an investment in the property? And I think they do. They put a lot of money into the property. Into the property. And they've upgraded it for you since you lived there, because they took it over. It was in bankruptcy. I remember when the buildings, I lived down there, were different colors. Everybody remember that? When the building, you remember, when the buildings were all different colors. They upgraded, they put money into that. And more people bought after they did that. So they have put those monies in, and new residents have come there since they upgraded. Because I remember, I didn't know what the heck they were building. There were two and three story buildings back there with pink and blue and green buildings. Somebody should have pictures of that from way back then. And I lived down off of Bay Road and I, I, I saw them all the time. But just by that alone, they fixed them up and they made them uh, so people would buy them and they invested the money. I don't think there's any denying that. But what we're here tonight talking about are things that, there are conflicts, the rifts, and they should be able to be sat down and negotiated and talked about and worked out. That's not my job here. Not between an HOA and somebody else. I live in one myself. I know what they're like. People don't agree. And it happens all the time. They don't agree. So, you know, that's where I'm at. John, the other end? I've already stated how I feel. I, and I, I realize that we are here to make resolution on whether we believe that there are vested rights, and I certainly believe that there are. Um, I, I think we also need to warn everyone, not warn, but just inform you that the planning board doesn't make capricious decisions either. They have rules that they need to follow. Uh, but every project I've seen go through the planning process, and I came from a planning board many years ago, um, it's a long, drawn-out process. Developers sometimes get frustrated, residents get frustrated, but what I've seen 
probably 95% of the time is a better project to come out of that long, arduous process. So uh, I have full confidence in our planning board. They've always done a great job, and I know that they'll listen to your concerns. When this project gets to them, whatever the next whatever the next phase is, but that's not what we're here to do tonight. I'm going to move resolution to the town board regarding. Can I ask a question? With all due respect, how are we benefiting from you doing this? That's, what, what is, like you said, what is the benefit of this building? I just want to know how am I benefiting on the Hewlett Drive looking at your high rise? What am I benefiting? What am I benefiting living in Webster with that high rise? What is it to my benefit? Ma'am, the public part was over if you like. Appreciate. I don't know how you're going to benefit. This was done in 1986. I, no, Hewlett, I understand that, but you're not giving me an there. answer. No one's giving an answer, so I'm asking. I don't want to be dismissed like that either. Am I correct? The Q and Drive was not there in 1986. Am I correct? I don't they know, had approval in 1986. They had approval in 1986. And I understand that, but I feel like, you know what, you're like everybody's tap dancing around it, especially you, and I don't like being dismissed like that, so I'm just asking, what is the benefit? Can somebody tell me what the benefit is? And maybe I might feel a little better about it. Ma'am, you're looking to me to answer that, but the supervisor's closed the public hearing. And that's your answer, too? So are we, are we closed tonight? We're closed. We're closed. Okay. <clears throat> Resolution of the Webster Town Board regarding legacy site plan for World Point Park Phase 3 and referral to the Town of Webster Planning Board for further action. Whereas on March 20, 1986, the Webster Town Board passed Resolution No. 108, which granted final approval of planned unit development as well as rezoning the World Point Park development site from RV Multiple Family Residential District Zoning to PRV Multiple Family Residential District Zoning. And whereas on April 30, 1986, the final site plan for the World Point Park development was signed by the Town of Webster Planning Board Chair, and whereas Legacy Development Inc. engaged in substantial construction and incurred significant costs and reliance on the Town Board's 1986 Resolution Number 108 and the Planning Board's 1986 <coughs> approvals, and this construction of costs are explained in detail in the affidavit of John Caruso, dated February 7, 2018, and the affidavit of Anthony DeMarzo, dated February 6, 2018, and the affidavit of Brian Powers, dated February 7. Whereas the Town Board hereby finds a legacy of development has vested rights under New York State law to construct phase three of the World Point project as originally approved in 1986. The Town Board Planning Board is authorized to conduct a site plan review. If appropriate, grant site plan approval for World Point Park phase three and be further resolved that the Town Board hereby refers this matter to the Planning Board for set purpose. Second. Supervisor Nesbitt? Aye. Councilman Abbott? Aye. Councilman Dean? Aye. Councilman Cahill? Aye. Councilman Lincoln? Excuse me, Councilman Lincoln. Aye. Okay, I'm going to take a five minute break. Thank you.